Florence was cool. I saw some pretty uh, historical stuff and it was really nice. I actually got to see the like the world's famous statue that one guy and then I saw this big church. I never thought I would be good enough in racing to be here. But well, I'm gonna think about the race right now. I'm kind of enjoying what I'm looking at, but yeah, it's always in the back of my mind. Yeah, I'm nervous, but uh, I'm just hoping for the best. Um, Jello Italy. It's gonna be intense. <laughs> well, for the next couple of days, I think it's gonna be a big ass party around here. They, uh, that's what it usually is here. This is not an easy place to figure out. It's, it's difficult, it's elevation changes. Lots of different things around here that'll make the bike work really good in one corner, and the next corner it's gonna seem like because it's downhill and falling away. It's an easy place to, uh, to make a simple mistake end up running off the track and tipping over and take your time, find some good reference points, have fun. I mean, everyone's fast, like from first to, I don't know, the last, they're all just real fast. I guess everyone's competition here. Hey. I want to get top five this time, and I know it'll be hard because I don't know the track, but even if I have to lay the bike down, I, I want to do what I have to just to, you know, stay in the first two rows. Sometimes I get like frustrated, like, because I don't know what's going on. Why is he going that slow? Because I know he can run up front, but when he's having a problem, I don't know what is it, you know, so. Sometimes I'm just not into it, but he tells me, you know, I have to be if I want to be up here and, you know, doing what I want. Because, you know, Jake's over here and then he's doing it, he's getting it done. I'm trying, but it's just not coming out. You're at Magello, MotoGP teams are here, it's, you know, 100,000 fans <laughs> sitting on the hillside. That in itself is enough pressure, and a lot of times the parents are added pressure. Um, you know, Benny Solis, Jay Gagne, Hayden Gillum, those kids have their dads here working on the bike. It's a certain situation where, you know, the family's been doing, doing their best to try and get this kid into, into a road racing career and, and trying to push him along and help him. It's kind of make it or break it time. Our whole goal is to stay up and, and get points and be consistent. So uh, not to throw the bike away. You can't, you can't do anything on the ground. You can't win on the ground. You can't score points on the ground. Having my dad here is, it's good. He pushes me a little bit harder and he knows how to work on bikes really good. So it's, I like having my dad here. It's good. The old days of daddy and son going racing are kind of over. Now it's just, uh, just make sure you get me there, Dad. I'll take it from there. It's easier to give feedback to him about what the bike is doing because we've been uh, racing and working on bikes together for eight years now. And he's just a really big help because, uh, well, he's my dad. Usually he's always been real loose and doesn't really get stressed or anything like that. This year, I don't know if he is or not. I just try to make him laugh. My dad just usually just say good luck and stuff before the race. It's not like uh, he's out there and like saying you have to finish the race, you have to win this one and all that. Think of the championship, like that stuff. It just says good luck and do your best. A lot yeah. of parents interfere a lot and tell them do this, do this, do this. Yeah, I know get, that. And yeah. get angry if they crash, and it's not like that. You know, whether it's your father, whether it's somebody who's who's really close to you, they can be your biggest supporter at times, but they can also be your biggest critic, especially if the the, the kid has a struggle out there and uh, you know maybe has a rough weekend, and then you know dad's sitting there, arms crossed, kind of looking at you. One of his talents, a natural thing for him, is he's about as calm as can be. I'm nervous as get out, I can't hardly stand still. 
He's over there taking his sweet time, getting dressed. What? I still got 15 minutes. Like it's a day or two. It's going quite well, actually. I haven't been freaking out yet, so we'll see if there's a toilet lens take sometime. Probably get a bit more nervous, but not really too much now, no. Let's go out. Disaster from Fagerhout. Total disaster from the cup leader. Well, his practice start wasn't any good to him at all because that's made an absolute nonsense of him. Uh, basically, letting know Benny that uh, his position, what lap times, and you know, so that way he can see what's going on. He's now up into 13th. He'll still see that he's got a chance of getting with the front runners here. Five abreast across the start and finish line for the rookies. And Fagerhaug is there with a the red helmet. Pick out number 33, Fagerhaug. He's right there now. He's on the left-hand side. He's up into third place. Is he going to go for second? He looks at second. He doesn't. He backs out of it. Kornfeld comes around the outside. Fagerhaug has the advantage. Now Kornfeld could tuck in behind him and really work with the Norwegian and try and get away from the rest of the pack. In the beginning, I was a little bit nervous, but now it's a little bit Jake Gagne is still with that third place and if anything he has closed that gap, he's certainly opened up the advantage. He's staying smooth and he's got fast as lap right now, so how are you feeling? Nervous as heck, but all right, all right. It's all good. It's hard to have as much fun as I'm having right now. Oh, and there's two men down, two men down, and I didn't see the falling, so I'm not sure who that is. It's too far distant, unfortunately. Jake Gagne walking back. And he went down up there, so he was walking as they show him on the camera, so. He was pushing, you know, trying to run up there. It's difficult to do, never been here, so maybe he pushed a little too hard. It'll be fine, it's time to go to the next one. And now he knows he can run with these guys, so I would say look out. Weaving across the track to spoil the slipstream, it's uh, Sterla Fagerhau who's going to take it. Sterla Fagerhau takes his second victory of the Rookies Cup season. Il norvegese Sturla Fagerhaug. Rookies Cup, Red Bull, Garde Mugello, Terzo, Dai Giro. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sure, you got to make the race exciting, you know. It's no fun if I pull away at the front. No, no, I'm just kidding. I do feel kind of relieved uh, by winning that race because it didn't look like I was going to do that after that shit starts. So. Really, when I crossed that finish line, I'm so happy. In that last corner, I just took the front. It's all right, I felt good on the bike and the track and everything. Next time. I've had two broken wrists, a uh, broken collarbone, broken toes, broken heel and then just uh, got knocked out a few times. They're all really painful, breaking bones never feels good, but you just gotta deal with it. The crash is that I know I'm gonna hurt myself. Like, whenever I broke my collarbone, that crash, whenever I high-sided, the three or four corners before I crashed, it just felt like I was dreaming. And uh, then whenever I crashed, it felt, it, it didn't even feel like I was the one crashing. I love seeing a good crash. I mean, not necessarily motorcycles, cars, anything is, and they're, you know, as long as they walk away, nobody likes to see anybody get hurt, but sure, crashing is part of the, the aura of racing, and when crashes occur, it's usually because somebody's pushing the limit, and you're going, you know, just a little bit over the edge, and usually that's very, very fast, so. If you race motorcycles, you gotta expect you're gonna crash sooner or later, and uh, you just gotta accept it, try not to think about it. It, sometimes it can be bad, sometimes you can walk away and not even feel anything. It just depends how it is. 
but you just gotta learn to accept it. The, the, I think the certain amount of danger, some guys are willing to take that risk a little bit more than the other, and that's those guys that can, can, can push the envelope, recover from it, and still go back there time and time again. You know, while motorcycle racing is still a dangerous activity, there are less broken limbs um, compared with, how, with what they used to be. Partly because we've built technology into the suits and uh, the equipment which aims to keep riders sliding during the course of an accident, so dissipating energy during the course of an accident. And there are certain accidents where inevitably you know, limbs or bones get broken because of the sheer forces involved. But, um, but generally speaking, riders these days are less prone to the sort of injuries that occur through you know, violent, uncontrolled crashes. A decade or two ago, the sport was a lot more individual then and a lot more dangerous. You know, now it's more of a team sport. You know, the, the team that you ride for and the people around you matter more, and it's a lot less dangerous than it used to be. You've got to be unlucky to get very seriously hurt now, and terribly unlucky to get killed. You've got people out there that are doing something that one millionth of the population could possibly do. Me being on the edge of my seat, my heart racing, and I mean, I can't go do it anymore, but I can definitely get that feeling by watching it, especially when you know somebody, or in my case, I'm lucky enough to have my son that does it.